Hey folks, it's Jeff Fuzzy Wenzel from the Woodshed Agency, and you are listening to a new episode of Successfully Funded. Here we go. Let's turn it up. Turn it up. Yeah! crowdfunders how's everybody doing out there in the beautiful wonderful land of crowdfunding i am your host jeff fuzzy wenzel ceo of woodshed agency and the host of this podcast successfully funded if this is your first time here well let me welcome you let me welcome you yeah <laughs> My sound effects going again early put those sound effects in quick on this episode um but what we do here on this podcast is we like to talk to project creators uh, who are running a Kickstarter or Indiegogo campaign, and we want to talk to them while they're in the middle of doing it or their campaign is like just finished up, right? So that way, we are getting you the most up-to-date information on what to do to be successfully funded for your project. And today is going to be an amazing episode. It's episode 227. We're going to be talking to uh, Patrick Mallorit from the company Sakwa, uh, and he's running a Kickstarter campaign right now. It's for the X10. Uh, it's like a form-fitting shoe really really state of the art tons of amazing cool features in it and uh they've got they've raised over $197,000 with uh just under 2300 backers and they still got 23 days to go so this campaign is trending uh roughly to about well let's go check it out here let's see what they're actually at here let's look at it real quick yeah so they are this is the campaign page here let me pull it up here uh so you can see that they are doing really really well so they're trending to about $285,000 um you can see that this is the shoes. So I recommend, you know, if you haven't already, go check this out. And like I said, it's Sakwa X10. Uh, so this is going to be our interview coming up here in just a little bit. But yeah, go check out the page. Check out the rewards. You know, re Patrick's got an amazing story. I actually first talked to him yeah, about three years ago about this exact campaign. Um, we ended up not working together. All good on that. But uh, it was great to kind of reconnect with him uh, on the campaign. So yeah, so that is... Um, that's, that's what's going on over here. That's who we're going to be interviewing here in just a little bit is Patrick. So I'm super excited for that interview coming up here in just a little bit. And again, if you want to fast forward through this, if you're watching this on Facebook live, you can, but if you're on the podcast, you can just fast forward and get through all the, uh, you know, all the stuff I'm just talking about. Also on our show today, our musical guest is going to be Sam Lawton. Um, one of the bands I recorded back in the GBS day. So again, if you're a regular listener, you know that we've used, used to close the show out with all sugar people music. Uh, but now what we're doing is uh, uh, showcasing some of the bands that we recorded over the uh, six years or so at GBS. Uh, and everything you're going to hear at the end is live recorded all in one take. So really, really great performance from uh, one of his songs uh, about six, year, six, six years ago or so. Um, but that's going to be coming up in just a little bit, too. So what else is going on? Well, we've got the, we've got the inaugural. Well, today, no school today. Happy Martin Luther King Day. Happy Martin Luther King Day. <laughs> Let's get that. Uh, <laughs> Oh, that one, and then the get off my uh, my sound effects. Maybe I'll get some new sound effects. I don't know. I'll have to go out and look for those. But um, don't don't. This is what I have so far. I also have the bicycle horn. That's not too bad. Uh, it's not my favorite, but um, yeah. So it's we got the inauguration this week. Super excited about that. Let's see what that sounds like. Yeah. Um. Yeah, and I'm, I'll. I gotta imagine. I gotta imagine. I'm gonna probably get a little emotional for that. I mean, you know, it's been a long time coming. Um, maybe the chaos dies down just a little bit, but man, I am hoping that everybody's gonna be safe and no ridiculousness happens. But who knows? I know Sunday was supposed to be a, a day. You know, stuff was gonna happen there, all the capitals. But apparently, that was it was pretty quiet from all the news feeds and all the sources I've looked at. I know here in Michigan, there was supposed to be a big rally at our capital, but. I don't think people showed up as much, which is great. But yeah, so no school today. So kids are just hanging out. I'm not going to lie. I feel great this morning. I slept in a little bit. Got up at like 8.30. Man, got up. Haven't even really had breakfast yet, but I'm just going, man. Just wanted to get this podcast episode up because I was super excited about it. But um, yeah, other big things. Man, we got a new kitchen floor this weekend, Woo! Um, which was awesome. Uh, yeah, my sister and her wife, Kate, came over and kicked major you-know-what, um, and we put in a new kitchen floor, and it, I'm gonna, I am gonna—I keep saying we, 
I was the official um, DJ for the event. So I put on a lot of really good music to keep the energy up. I also ordered the pizza. So those, you know, those are important things to be doing. Um, you need to have those people. Otherwise, the floor might not have got done. Now, granted, they did most of the heavy, uh, most of the actual work of cutting the boards and then placing them and moving ovens and furniture. Oh, and and taking apart the old floor. So they did a lot of the real work. I just went ahead and, um, like I said, made sure the music uh, was just on point. And I think I did a pretty good job. I'm not gonna lie. So I have realized that in this whole, um, you know, owning of a house and fixing everything. I've got a few specialties that I, you know, you don't get talked about a lot on, on like this old house or Bob Vila one flashlight holder. I'm really, really good at that. Right. Cause you know, in that one, you may, you want to make sure that you're not, um, you're not putting the flashlight a little, you know, right on the thing because then you can't see it as too bright. You want to make sure you're not getting it in the person's eyes. Right. So you want to really make sure that you're in this sort of sweet spot. I mean, that's a lot of work what I'm describing right now. I mean, seriously, it really is. So I'm really good at that. I'm also really good at making sure that the food selection is like on point for work, right? You don't want to have something too heavy, too light. You want to make sure, and you want to make sure you get stuff that like people enjoy, right? So you got dietary restrictions. That's a lot of work. That's a lot of work. So I got to do that, which is fine, but I'm good at that. And then last but not least, making sure that the music selection is absolutely on point. And that is really where I come in and I think really bring an A game that is uh, unmatched, unmatched. So again, if this old house wants to get in touch with me, Jeff at woodshed.agency, I'd love to hear from you. I'd love to maybe do a set, uh, maybe a segment on the show around, you know, sort of the fringe things that are necessary to get big projects done. And, you know, we're gonna do countertops soon. I gotta, I gotta think about what kind of playlist do we need for countertops? Yeah, yeah, how about that? So what else, man? Great football yesterday. I watched some football this weekend. You know, there really isn't anything much better when it comes to the football world than, than NFL playoffs. I think it really is kind of the best, right? So I got to watch some of that last night. I watched a little, a little Patriots, or not Patriots, excuse me, Tom Brady and the uh, Drew Brees. I, you know, that's just, right, it's been a long time, right? But the Bucks and the Saints last night, so that was nice. I got to hang out there um, and uh, enjoy just a little bit of wine while I was uh, watching, the, watching a little sports and uh newest thing too is just taking a lot of walks man been walking the dog you know getting getting myself and buddy out there walking and walking with our friends uh the demonts you know which has been nice and uh you know it, it's a nice little quick break gonna be doing that today around 2 30 gonna take a quick little little break from uh from the from the sending of the emails and the making of the podcast to go do that so yeah super exciting day man this is gonna be a good week i think i think you know we should all yeah, really put on this like let's put this energy in the world, man. Let's put it out there in the world and like let's 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 have an amazing week. That's kind of what I feel because it's Monday. It's Monday. It's ten in the morning. We're kicking it off. Um, you know, I'm excited about this episode. I hope all of you guys stay tuned and really, uh, you know, again, if you're thinking about running a crowdfunding campaign, there are a few things that you should be uh, thinking about doing. Right. So one, don't do it alone. Go over right now to woodshed.agency and click on anything, right? You can click on the blog section. Tons and tons of valuable information there. Every Tuesday, we've got a new blog that comes out. So that's one thing. You know what else after that? Subscribe to this podcast. Maybe even, uh, I don't know, smash <laughs> that subscribe button. And, uh, you know, wherever you're listening to it, it might be Spotify, Stitcher, iTunes. I don't care where you're listening to it. But if you are listening to it, hit that button. And then after that, leave us a review. Reviews are very, very helpful, I think. I don't really know. But, you know, leave us a review. That would be awesome. Um, so those are some of the things that you can do for us that would be super, super helpful. Um, and then, like I said, don't run your campaign alone. Hit the consultation button up at the top and just pick a time to talk. I'm not going to sell you anything. I, I don't know why I, I don't get anything to sell you. Just have a conversation with me. Walk through, you know, what your strategies are going to be, how you're going to get the crowd built before you launch. Again, it's called crowdfunding. So those are things that you can um, that you can do that free of charge, right? They don't cost you anything. Do those things and um, at least make sure that you're in the right mindset and the right frame before you launch this campaign. And I say all that because in this interview coming up here, Patrick and I are going to talk about it over and over and over of like just making sure you're in the right headspace to truly go out and have an amazing campaign. So 
With all that said, man, super excited for this episode. And make sure you guys stay tuned at the end for uh, this performance by Sam Lawton at Groovebox Studios. It was outstanding. And again, all recorded live, one band, one room, one take. So that's coming up here in just a minute too. So with all that said, why don't we go ahead and kick it over to my interview with Patrick. And let's talk about Sakwa X10 over on Kickstarter. Here we go. The red lights on. This is go time. This is when we have to make uh, podcast magic. Are you ready? All right, go for it, Jeff. <laughs> All right, make well, magic. Let's, yeah, let's do it. Let's make the magic together here. So let's do a simple sound check here. What did you have for breakfast this morning? I had absolutely nothing yet. Nothing, man. I know it's it's been a busy morning. Okay. All right. Now is that normal or is that just a busy morning? It's just a busy morning. Just a busy morning. Okay. All right. Cool. Awesome. Well, I think we're sounding good. Why don't we jump into it? We won't talk more about your busy morning. Um, we'll talk actually more about your crowdfunding campaign. So why don't you do me a favor? Why don't you uh, uh, introduce yourself and tell my listeners uh, what you're raising money for uh, over on Kickstarter. Okay. Uh, hi, guys. My name is Patrick Mallory. I'm the CEO, president, founder, bottle washer of Sokwa, um, a company, a little company based in uh, California. Um, we've been making beach socks, beach shoes for decades, and uh, now we are moving into the traditional shoe market mm. with our first ever Kickstarter, um, which we launched on the mid of February, uh, uh, sorry, the mid of December, okay. 15th of December. And uh, we have been astounded by the, the success so far. And we're looking forward to the, the next straight channel down the road, which is the next five months. That's cool. That's cool. So, you know, so you've been in the shoe business for a while now. What made the move into leaving, I guess, the beach wear or that type of, of products into more of a, I guess, more of a traditional t- style shoe, if that's how you would describe it? That's a, that's a really good yeah. uh, way of describing it, Jeff. Um, if anybody, uh, Sock has been around since 2008. Um, so it's been around for the same type of period as uh, another brand that you, your followers may may know. Uh, it's called Vibram Five Fingers. Yeah, yeah. Um, so those you know those really funky uh, <laughs> yep. shoes, awesome shoes, by the way. Um, we went down a different road. We looked at the concept. We focused on the beach, the California beach industry. Um, you know, most people spend their entire lives either playing beach volleyball or beach soccer or beach tennis or just walking down the beach. Um, and then we slowly evolved. Uh, we used the same principle, the sock, the beach sock. And then we decided to add a micro thin outsole, plastic outsole to it. Uh, actually, I believe we are the thinnest outsole in the world. Nice. And uh, at 1.2 millimeters. So wow. if you get your ruler out and do 1.2, <laughs> you go, wow, that's not a lot of protection. Right. Um, and, and really, we brought that out for people using it on the beach, um, but also to uh, captivate a certain clientele called Barefoot Runners, mm-hmm. um, which Barefoot Runners it suggests that they are barefoot. Um, which they should be most of the time, but sometimes you have to wear something on your feet. Right. Um, so while still enjoying the, the pleasures of being barefoot. Um, so we, we, we did that. We've run that pretty successfully. Uh, I came into the operation a couple of years ago and looked at the business as it is. And I thought, no, this is too niche. Um, you know, we, we're, we're targeting 5%, maybe 2%, of the 5% yeah. of the market. Yeah. I'm in uh, Detroit. Uh, I'm not at the beach every day. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. So, but we understand that people like, you know, comfortable shoes and, sure. and, and the, the bottom line was, is that the shoes that we manufactured in the past, which we continue to manufacture, um, in addition to the new model, which we call the Sokwa X10, very sexy mm-hmm. name, Took a lot of imagination putting that one together, <laughs> and I bet you I don't. I bet you can't guess what the next product is going to be called. 
11. Good oh, job, Jeff. Oh, man, you're going to go with the 11. 11. Okay. I was like, a lot oh, of imagination man. going yeah, on there. Go with 11. Yeah. Um, so it, it, basically what we've done is we've looked at the market. Um, we've looked at positioning ourselves in the next step. Mm -hmm. And the next step of the market is called the minimal footwear market. Yeah. Uh, and that's really, that's about 5% of the shoe market in North America today. Mm. Um and, and basically what a minimal shoe is, is it's a shoe that has zero drop. Um, so the, the height of the heel is the same as the height of the toe. Um, it's generally very flexible. It generally has lots of room for your, your toes to wiggle. Um, and basically the, the outsole is generally very thin. Yeah. Um, now, the, we, we've gone a little bit, a step a little bit further Again, we're always a little bit extreme. Um, the normal outsole thickness of a minimal shoe is anything between minimum four millimeters up to 10 millimeters mm, okay. in thickness. Yeah. Um, the, the thinner you get, the more proprioceptive feedback you get from every step. That's understandable. Yeah. Um, what we've done is we've created an outsole that is 3.5 millimeters um, because we have to better everybody. Um, <laughs> and what we've done is we've created this, this, you know, this shoe. It's super flexible. They can slap people yeah. around the face with it. <laughs> uh, it's flexible in every single way. It's stretchable. It slips on your foot so it doesn't fall off your feet. Yeah. The laces are there to control uh, lateral movement in the shoe um, and lots of other funky stuff inside of there. Um, but fundamentally, it's a super, super comfortable shoe. That's really great. Um, That's really great. And what we've done is we've added, um, it's not a gimmick because uh, I, I, I go camping in the woods and, and uh, forest running and everything else. Um, one of the things about a minimal shoe is that you do feel a lot of ground. Right, right. And, and so yeah. what we've done is we've developed a puncture resistant insole, mm. which is a, produced according to the same regulations as uh, work boots and work boot shoes. Wow. Um, and, and we've made it as thin as possible, but as effective as possible. Um, if you look at our campaign page, um, you'll see some, some video there. Pretty scary to see your foot standing on a very, very, very sharp nail yep. and you're not screaming. Yeah. Um, now we've made this, this puncture resistant outsole, uh, which is an example of it here. It's very flexible. Again, everybody wants flexibility. Um, you, basically you can stand on a two inch, three inch sharp nail. It won't go through. That's great. Uh, and damage your foot. That's awesome. Great, great if you're around the campsite. Yeah, I would say that. You know, you, you're, not gonna, you're not going to worry about those things uh, in town so much because people generally clean. Mm -hmm. um, but in, in the forest or when you're trekking or there's uh, black thorn there. And I, I was introduced to a new thorn the other day called the goat's head. Mm. Um, you've got to read up on this, Jeff, this <laughs> this. Uh, this thorn is particularly sharp, so we're wow. we're planning to do a video with that um, in the next couple of weeks. Um, it's actually much smaller than a, a nail, um, so we proved it with a nail. So we're wow. just having fun with the the goat's head, and I love the name. <laughs> yeah, I love, the, good name. I love the name of the thorn. It's brilliant. <laughs> that's a good one. Um, so, so what starts the process for you guys as you're kind of moving from you know other other types of of shoe products? Um, into this, is it prototyping? Is it, do you, you know, do you already have sort of that world built in, you know, prototyping manufacturing? Is yeah, it easier yeah, for thought, you guys to sort of navigate into that? It, it, it is, it is. And, um, you know, let, let's be realistic, Jeff. Um, you know, we've, we've just gone through 2020. We're just debuting 2021. Mm -hmm. um, for a few months of the year, the beaches were closed. Yeah, yep. Yeah. And, uh, one of my clients is a uh, beach uh, or a travel accessory in e-commerce. We didn't and, have an amazing year. <laughs> um, and then, yeah. then you take on that the retail stores were closed. Yep. 
uh, the academies, the, the beach volleyball, beach tennis, mm -hmm. beach soccer academies were closed. So we, we had to think on our feet. You have to be, as an entrepreneur, you have to be flexible. You have to make decisions and you have to make decisions that you can manage. Right, right. So, and that's, that's the key area. So we decided, we, we looked at, uh, we've been looking at uh, crowdfunding for a couple of years. Um, it's, it's, a, it's an exceptionally exciting phenomena and model, mm -hmm. but people really don't understand how much work, yeah. how much money that you need to invest for you to be successful. Yeah. They actually believe there's a lot of the population out there that believe that they just need to slap a video on Kickstarter yep. and it will go viral. Um, I, there probably is one that did that, um, but I don't know which one it is. Yeah. Not many. Um, <laughs> yeah. There's always a exactly. unicorn out there. I always love that people find it and they're like, that's what we're going to be like. It's like, well, or that might've yeah, been a one. I think a little bit of a, um, so, so what we did is we, we looked at it like a, a like a general business problem. Yeah. We want to go into a market. We know nothing about the markets except what we read on, on, on the internet. Mm -hmm. um, it looks fantastic. We, we, our eyes grow big when you see the likes of Tropic Feel and, yeah. and yeah. Vessi, and, and we think, well, our shoe is actually better than that. Mm -hmm. uh, but how, do, how have they managed to do you know, two plus million in sales? Yep. Uh, well, we consequently, we found out. Um, we're, not, we're certainly not at two million, um, but we're doing, we're doing okay. We're yeah. doing okay. We're doing, well, we're doing more than okay. Yeah. Um, so now, now we've realized that there is a game plan providing you, and we've made lots of mistakes, Jeff. <laughs> oh, it's a, seriously, if I was to count all the mistakes I've made in the past three months, putting together this, this crowdfunding campaign, it would exceed the mistakes I've made in the past 10 years. <laughs> Yeah, but, but it's I, good to make them now. You got to make them now, not, you know, when you have inventory, you have, uh, you know, 50,000 shoes, you got to move. And then you're, starting, exactly, to, exactly. Then you're starting to make uh, those mistakes. Yeah. Yeah. So, so we, we're, we're coming at crowdfunding from a, a, a bizarre point of view um, or a different point. Mm -hmm. um, I, 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 liken, I liken crowdfunding to infomercials of five to eight years ago. Yeah. Yeah, no, I, I yeah, we're aware. That, yeah, that yeah. that that is it. That is it. And this, again, I think I think crowdfunding will evolve in the next couple of years, yeah. um, quite substantially. Yeah. Um, because it it is it's basically it's an internet infomercial. Yep. Yep. And, well, and, we're, and we're, we're, we've seen a lot of very well established companies starting to come over to this as their product launch vehicle you know it changes the the math equations are different behind the scenes the they, they amount of risk the you know you know do i have to produce twenty thousand units and hope that a buyer wants it for big box retail you know and then you take all that risk your cash flow all that you know all of those things start to change if you you know when you put crowdfunding is like hey you know let's launch it here first see what happens kind of get a sense of the market how many orders we need, color choices, whatever it might be, right? Like you just start getting a sense of all these data points and then you go, okay, now we'll make decisions, you know, to exactly. do 20,000 units of the red one, not the blue one, because everybody exactly. bought the red one, you know? Um, but yeah, so I, I think what was intriguing for this one, and I'd love for you to kind of maybe talk about a little bit is, you know, I think this type of product has a very interesting buyer persona. Um, so how did you guys navigate thinking about who would actually be the consumer of this product? Because I don't know if it's everybody, you know, is it everybody that wears this type of shoe or is it a very specific mindset of person who not only wants to be in crowdfunding, but like, this is the type of shoe I'm looking for. How did you guys navigate that sort of conversation internally uh, before you launched? Well, actually, that's a, that's a nice point you bring up. Um, I'll, I'll, are you familiar with um, Chrysler cars? Sure, of course, I'm in Detroit. Right. Right, so <laughs> yeah. can, can yeah. you can you remember the PT Cruiser? Of course, yep. Yeah, um, actually, one of the most successful cars ever produced by Chrysler. Yep. Probably the most ugly car I've ever seen, personally. Yep. 
Yep. And basically, the, the statisticians worked out that 60% of the population absolutely hated this car. The remaining 40% thought it was okay. And there was 20% thought, I love it. Yeah. And they went ahead and bought it. Yep. They bought it because of several reasons. It was different. Yep. It was funky. It was quirky. And There's some nostalgic, it, I think, thrown in there, right? There's yeah, a little bit of nostalgic yeah. of people thinking it was an old school hot absolutely. ride car from the 50s. And you know, they, I think they even brought a model out that had wood panels on the yep. side. Yes, they did. Um, yep. and, and and they did that for that nostalgia. Yep. So we're, we're I, I'm not comparing myself to PT Cruiser, um, but our shoe is different. Mm-hmm. Our, our shoe looks different to yep. every other shoe. Um, and it's it's quirky. Um, and one of the one of the comments somebody made, made was, you know, uh, part of our team said, "Oh, it's stylish." And I went, "Oh no, it's not stylish. <laughs> it's it's ruggedly stylish. Yeah, yep. it's roguishly attractive. Yep, but it's not fashionista." Mm-hmm. Um, so the person who's going to relate to buy to buying a super comfortable shoe is somebody that wants a comfortable shoe. Yeah. They, they, they like the quirkiness of the design. There's aspects there that they appreciate. Um, the, the gamut of customers that we have, quite honestly, it, it, it is incredible. We yeah. have anybody from uh, a barefoot or minimalist runner who does this pro- semi-professionally to um, the, the guys that go and hike the Appalachian Mountains. And then you've got the people who are going to use it for their yoga, their streetwear. And then you've got a completely different demographic that's basically over 50 years old mm-hmm. that all they want is for comfort. Right. Right. They've got swollen, they've got swollen ankles. Yep. They've got swollen feet. They've got bunions. Mm-hmm. They've got they've got all these ailments that have kind of deformed their feet, yeah. and they've got choices on surgery or they wear a shoe that adapts to them. Sure, sure. So we we've got customers all across there. So um, so even inside of that, I mean, even though that you are still a niche shoe company, you're not Nike, right? You're not making basketball shoes, right? You're not that. No. So even inside of what you're talking about, there still is four or five personas in there. Now, how do you start to navigate the content needed to at least speak to them without alienating somebody, or at least not going so big that your market is now everybody, but not going so narrow that you're kind of repeating what you were talking about with the uh, um, like the beach shoes, right? It's like, it's yeah. just people on the beach all the day. So how mm-hmm. do you sort of navigate that? Because I think when I look at the page, I think you guys did an amazing job of you know, I can see my sister is the person who would love this shoe, right? Like I see her in this, right? I can look at it and go, oh yeah, that, that represents my sister would be totally into that. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, so how did you guys sort of navigate that content? Cause I think again, with crowdfunding, super, super important that you're representing. Well, we, we've, we've it, got a sli- we've got a slight advantage, Jeff. We've done this before. Right. And, and that the bottom line is, is that we've done it before. What, what we haven't done before is we've never included the, the puncture resistant, aspect mm, right. um and uh, i'll tell you a funny story it's not necessarily a funny story but it's a it's a story for other uh, people who do crowdfunding campaigns um so we we've, we we obviously we decided on including a puncture resistant insole we knew that during a certain period of the campaign we would have to introduce the insole explain it mm-hmm. um so what we did is we chose one of our updates and to, to, to do the explanation. And, and we showed an image of, um, of a young man walking on a bed of nails. Yeah. And I, I, thought, I, I thought it was great. I yeah. thought it was great. But here's where I made a mistake is I, I didn't figure that people would question this. <laughs> so all of a sudden we got like lambasted with emails and messages and social media posts saying, oh, that's really easy. Anybody can do that with any shoe. And I'm thinking, no, you can't. Mm. But okay, uh, do it on one nail. Right. And I'm thinking to myself, okay, if it was one person, I'd go, all right, come on. Yeah. But we're talking 
dozens and dozens right. and yeah. dozens yeah. of people that said the same thing. Yeah. So what we did is we, it actually gave us an opportunity to re-attack our customers. Yep. And this is why, you know, sometimes if you make a, a mistake, it's not the end of the world. Yeah. Long as you can adapt and react, then you, you get positive from it. So what we well, did is we... I mean, that's the, that's the benefit of crowdfunding too, is this, this taking this crowd information and not hiding from it and not being hiding open. From it. It's such a smart community of people. You know, they're, they're actually kind of, they want you to communicate. They want yeah, you to they, come they, back with a real answer. And if you hide from that, that's actually when the problem is, you know? Exactly, exactly. Yeah. So, okay, I basically said to everybody who posted, I said, look, I didn't think of that. I honestly, and I didn't. And what I'll do is I'll have a look at it and I'll pop up a video in another couple of days or right. in a few days. Yeah. So I ended up, we, we, we reposted the, the video um, and to show, and it's, it's graphic. You've, people have got to see this. This basically, you see this foot just going onto this massive sharp nail and just slowly going down. And you, you just, cringe yeah, yeah, when you yeah, see cringe. it yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but the reality is is and then, and then what we did was we had the courtesy to go back because we were very polite you, you have to be polite yep, yep. and we were very polite and we went back and said you know what thank you very much for for bringing this to our attention you've actually helped us in our customer service yeah, yeah. because they did and our sales yep. went up yep and those people that were sitting on the fence about including the insoles, we saw a, a shift. Yep. People yep. actually adding the insole to the to their their basket. That's crazy. So that's crazy. That that's the, again the, what I'm trying to give over is that you know you can make mistakes, but be honest. Be honest with your crowd. Yep. Tell them what you're doing. Go through with what you say you're going to do. Right. Post it and then th actually thank the people. Yeah. Yep. Thank the crowd. For, yep. for, for actually giving you feedback that you didn't have before. Now, is that something that uh, you guys as a company culture had to adapt to? Or is it something that you guys have felt that it's always been there? Because again, when I've, with, I've worked with companies that have existed, not brand new companies, it can be pretty challenging to move that battleship of like, no, we're going to be vulnerable. We're going to put our warts out there. We're going to, you know, we're going to, we may make a mistake, right? Cause that is, this is what we're discussing is crowdfunding, but that's not in traditional business, right? Like that's not, you put the best marketing material you can out there always. And it's not quite like that in this world. So is that something that you guys had to find, you know, no, I, I think find we, it we, a little bit, you know? Well, again, it's, it's in our mentality, Jeff. Yeah. Um, you know, we went from a beach sock to a beach shoe, mm -hmm. but we, again, we're very competitive and there's nothing wrong with being competitive. Right, right. Yeah. We, we, we wanted to be the best beach shoe with the thinnest outsole in the market. Mm -hmm. um, when it was certainly not the cheapest beach shoe, right. but we do have the thinnest insole, or the thinnest yeah. outsole. Um, so our philosophy to go going into the Sockwear X10 campaign was very much the same. We had a, a number of points that we wanted to achieve, but we looked at what we wanted to achieve, not only for this campaign, but for another six to 12 campaigns. Sure, right. So it was, we looked at it a little bit like a franchise. Mm. You know, in the films, franchise films. Yeah, yeah. And so we, and again, the, the crowd gives you the information you need mm -hmm. for your next campaign. Um, I, I can give you examples. Uh, people want this product to be waterproof next time. Mm, right. They'd like they'd like to see a boot. Yep. They'd like to see it waterproof and a boot. Yeah. They'd like to see puncture resistant outsole. <laughs> right. Right. And yeah. option within sole. Yeah. They they want fleece lined. Yeah, so basically they're just telling you, like they're literally telling you your products, you know, like it's awesome. Make this, it, yeah. Yep. Make this, I'll buy it. Yep. Yeah. And and again, it's the the the, the secret is to actually listen to the, the crowd because they yeah. they they're telling you it might not be it might only be twenty percent of them, but twenty percent of them are telling you, dude, if you come out 
with a fur lining and make this waterproof, you've got my business. Yeah. 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 So That's... guess what? Guess what? Yeah. Go with go go where they're going, right? You know exactly. Yeah, don't have to reinvent the wheel. Over this whole process, what did you find that it was keeping you guys up the most at night? What was the thing that you were like, man, we really have to make sure we get this. This is our like core DNA. I'm I'm not sure we had that feeling, Jeff. Mm. Um, and again, it was it was more to do with being realistic and organized, um, as organized as you can be. Right. Um, before you launch. Yeah. Um, and we, we have made some mistakes where we, we know we've made this mistake. Um, we haven't, we didn't solicit enough, uh, PR public relations, um, before the campaign. Um, we, we should have done a lot more of that. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and we'll know for the next time, sure. um, you know, it's, uh, once, once the campaign gets going and, and, it, and it's funded and you know that you're able to produce, um, and this is the thing that, that, for me, we were going to produce. Right. That was it. Yeah. We, we head down, okay, we need this much, we can produce this. Um, and, and I think that's the key because I, th- I see a lot of crowdfunding companies that are coming with um, concepts yeah. But once you get round to the, the amount of money that you actually generate, you don't have enough money to fill the concept. Yep. Yeah, it happens all the time. It's and I and it, and it and it pisses people off, Jeff. Yep. Oh, I know. It hurts the entire crowdfunding community. It hurts real companies. It hurts guys like me who are like, you know, I, I might have been a part of stuff that oh, I know I haven't. I've been doing this ten years. I've I've been a part of companies that just couldn't deliver. They just didn't do their math correctly. You know, they didn't realize how much the mold really was. You know, and they wanted to just set a goal of. You know, or they just want, hey, we, we want to just raise 30 grand. Yeah, but you needed 75. Where are you getting, I, <laughs> you know? I, I, um, I, again, I, I had a guy I had a guy the other day. And, and it's funny, the, the crowdfunding communities, is, it's, it's very transparent, yeah. very honest. Yep. Um, and, and the guy, he, he was actually honest. He put his, his Kickstarter up there and he was asking for $384,500. And... <laughs> After three days, he's looking at his his, uh, his figures and he's got nobody. Right, yeah. because it's... it's because, again, you have to yeah. look at the, the reality. Yeah. The people who are going to look at that, they're going to go, he's never going to make that. He's never going to make it. Yeah. He's never going to make gonna, it. Never going to come close. But to he that, was honest. You know? But he was honest. He was honest. So, yep, that, that, that's uh, oh, it's a strange I enigma. some audio here real quick. Hold on a second here. Let me see here. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. What you got there, Jeff? Yeah, is your mic on? Yeah. Oh. All right, all right. So anyway, so the, the, this campaign, three, very honest, asking for three hundred eighty-four thousand five hundred dollars, and no, he's not going to make it. He's yeah. not going to make it, and that's that's a reality. You you yep. sell sell what you can make. Yeah. So you know. As you're getting closer to launch day, what are you looking for internally behind the scenes to say we're ready to launch? You know, we have a is there data points you are looking for? Is there a, a timing factor at all? What are you kind of putting together to say, all right, let's hit that launch button? Well, for, for us, it was um, it was the pre reach. Um, so we did an extensive amount of pre reach by Facebook hmm. um, before the campaign. So we we generated. We obviously had the, the, the fortuitous position of having um, our own database of customers. Um, that, that, was, uh, that was a great help. Um, and, and basically making sure that we were getting the outreach and people were aware of the product before the launch. Yeah. Um, you know, it's, it's it, pressing that green button, Jeff, at, at that moment where you're pressing the green button and you've got zero sales there. <laughs> Um, I think that was the, the the moment that was both euphoric and quite and quite depressing, actually, yeah, yeah. Um, because you go, oh, I've got nothing at the moment. Press the green button, and you're crossing <laughs> your fingers. Yeah, and then we, yeah. we were very fortunate that a lot of people ordered straight away. So that's that, 
right. Big deep breath after that. Oh, big so, deep breath. Big deep breath. Uh, so, so, you know, what we're looking at here, I mean, we haven't even really talked about, I mean, you're up over $190,000 over 2,200 orders with still 26 days to go. So a lot of time in the uh, campaign here. Yep. Um, what, you know, what were you thinking about when it came to like a goal number to make it realistic? Cause we kind of talked about it a minute ago. You could have put a goal of 200,000, right? Like what were you kind of thinking like, all right, this is our minimum viable product. This number will make sense to people. This will, you know, was there any kind of conversation on that or was it a, just an arbitrary number that was picked? It was an arbitrary number. Um, we, 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 we hadn't, we, again, you, um, you can believe in it. Mm-hmm. Can you hear me? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Um, you can believe it. You can believe as much as you want in your product. You can do that preparation work. You can have that, 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 that nucleus of, of potential buyers, but until they press that button to buy, you don't know. Right. And I, I don't think, I don't think there's, I don't think there is a template or cookie cutter version out there um, that can say, you know what, if you do this, you'll make you know thirty thousand in sales in that product, right. yeah. or sixty thousand in that product. Um, you know, one of my favorite ever products on Kickstarter, I can't remember if it was Kickstarter or Indiegogo, was a beehive. Okay, can you remember the beehive? I, there, I, I, I'm, I'm pretty sure we're thinking about the same one because I remember seeing a beehive one, and my, my grandpa was a beekeeper, so it like caught my eye, and I, was, and I remember watching that campaign, and it was, yeah, I'm, I'm pretty I, I sure love, we're talking about the same one, you know. I, I love that campaign, I, yeah. but it's not that I wanted to buy the beehive. Mm-hmm. I love the principle behind the beehive. Yeah. Yep. You know, buy yourself a beehive, and the bees will grow in your back garden, and they'll not bother you, and they'll pollinate, and it was a, yep. it was a feel good. Purchase, yeah, yep. and and again, all right. It, obviously, a shoe is different to a beehive, but the 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 thing that we're trying to translate in everything that we do is this shoe is just so comfortable. Right, right. Just going back to that sort of same message. That it's a comfortable shoe, it's, most comfortable it, shoe. It, you know, it, it, it and it is. Yeah. You know, it it is amazingly comfortable, and you yeah. actually enjoy wearing it and you forget that you've got a pair of shoes on yeah that's and, cool. and that's the sensation that we want to bring to the market um to people in general um and that's been our same philosophy you know since 2008 that's cool has there been anything that has stood out at all in the campaign at this point where you're like man i did not expect you know this has there been anything that's been been out of the blue um, uh, I think if you've never done a uh, crowdfunding campaign um, and and you have the good fortune of doing a, a reasonably sized campaign, I, I, I've been amazed at the amount of social media messages and posts mm. that are made. Right. Yeah. Um, and I, I honestly, for anybody who's getting into this uh, and thinking about this, uh, it, it's it's almost a full time job. Yeah. Oh. Because <laughs> I don't you, know if it's you, almost. It it's a lot no, of stuff. It's, it's, again, <laughs> yeah. it's like yeah. It, yeah. you I, like I have a bit busy inbox for my emails. Um, you know, I've I've WhatsApp, I have WeChat, so I have every message service coming in. I, I hate it every day because I have to flip to everyone. Yeah. Um, but the reality is, is I just added another five to six days to my day, six hours to my day. Yeah. And, and I, I'm, I'm happy answering the questions because some of the questions are really cool. Yep. Some of them are mean. Some of the comments are yep. mean spirited. Yep. 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 And, and one thing that I've, I've learned, I've made a, I've made a couple of mistakes. I've dropped my hat on customer service a couple of times. Mm. Yep. Um, and it probably at the end of the day when you're tired and everything else, and you make a, you, you don't make a rude comment, but you make a, um, a straight comment. Yep. Sometimes you need to not press the button. Yep. Yeah. And just you look, give yourself the next yep. morning. Yep. Look at that message again and say to yourself, you know what? We, look at the question again. Is that person really ask, is, is complaining? Or is it just their way of asking a question? Yeah. Yep. So I, I've done that. Again, I've done that two or three times. 
um, in, in the past 30 days. And again, what I've done, my approach to that is to say, you know what, I'm really sorry. That was yeah. mean spirited. Yeah. Yeah. And, it's it's uh, a know, part I, of it. Yeah. Again, I, I, I've done it a couple of times. And, and and it wasn't what I said was what I wrote was a little mean spirited. Mm -hmm. It wasn't nasty. It was mean spirited. Right. Yeah, yeah. No, it, it yeah. exists. It's a, it's well. There's a part when you're running these campaigns that you just you you get so much of it, and you're just like, mm. I feel like I've already answered that like ten times, and you're like, like, I like are you reading what I'm just writing? Scroll up, or you know, just like you know where it is because you're in the weeds. But they're just they were on it for three seconds and they just wrote something, you know, just that. Yep, and that's, uh, and again, you've got to appreciate that. So yeah, no, uh, anybody, anybody doing a crowdfunding campaign and it's mildly successful, be prepared, whether it's yourself or, or get an employee mm -hmm. uh, but, or yeah. even, even subcontract somebody yep. to, who's able to answer all the questions. Cause yeah. it, there's a lot of questions. Mm -hmm. going. Yeah. There is the, the sweet spot that you want to try to get to is when the community starts answering. Oh, I love the that. Questions. I, when that happens, you're like, all right, all right. That's that, that's this person will handle it. Yeah. <laughs> and, and, and I've seen that so many times during this campaign yep. to the point where I've, I've actually had to write to the, the crowd, the hive to say, whoa, calm down. Like yeah. that, that's, there's no need to go down this road. <laughs> right. Right. Because they, 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 in certain cases, they become a little bit nasty. Yeah. Oh, I know. It's and you know, you, you can't you can't be using pejorative language. <laughs> you know, no. just because you disagree, you're like, whoa, stop that! Don't do that. Whoa, 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 whoa. easy, easy, easy. Yeah, now all of a sudden, a... they're like a representative of you, and you're like, whoa! Right, you got to get back <laughs> in and reel it back in. Yeah, <laughs> it's not bad. These, yeah, but these, this is what is, this is the rodeo, right? That, that we're in right yeah, now. It, it is. It fun. is. It is. So, you know, so with 26 days to go, I mean, what do you do to keep that energy going? Keep this, um, just keep the energy up, making sure that that trough of despair, that middle part isn't really, really low. Um, and you're just keeping, uh, you know, keeping orders coming. What are you guys doing to just keep that energy up right now? Well, I, the, the, the thing that we, we, we kind of structured the, the campaign. I don't forget, we had our campaign over Christmas and New Year. Right. Yeah. I know. <laughs> um, not the, it wasn't our fault. Yeah. The pandemic, basically, we had we were scheduled to do the campaign back in October, beginning of October. Um, but we couldn't do the filming. We couldn't do the. This was locked down. That was locked right. down. Yeah. And 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 the 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 days become weeks, and then all of a sudden, you you ask yourself, okay, it's the fifteenth of December. That's how date that's a really crummy date yeah and you 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 scan the internet for advice and and people go oh you don't want to be doing that yeah but i i think and this is where we had to make um a psychological step in the right direction we basically went you know what this year is not like every other year yeah so the rule book is actually out. Right. And yes, we've got a 58 day campaign. Yes. The traffic we know is going to slow down between Christmas and new year. Um, but people are going to be at home. Yeah. Right. That's, that's the other, and they're used to being at home now. Mm -hmm. So they're probably more likely to go shopping. Right. Online. Yeah. And they're going to go shopping online because there's such a thing as Boxing Day sales. Right. They're, yep. they're looking for purchases. So they've got their mentality of purchasing already on. Yeah. Um, so we, we, we did see a dip in, in between Christmas and New Year. It wasn't as big as we expected. Mm. It wasn't big as we expected. Wow. And we knew that the next tranche of time, so that by that time, we're 21 days into the campaign ish we mm -hmm. knew that the next bit we needed to work on more uh, communication mm. more pieces more videos um next week we come out with another update we've uh, we've we're gifting the world a foot exercise video mm. we've developed some exercises for strengthening your feet we we've spent a, we've spent a bit of money making it look nice 
and we, we just we want people to have fit feet yeah that's cool so here you go just that's that's our update um a lot of people have said well you're not selling anything there's no call to action there i don't think you need a call to action all the time yeah. Yeah, you can't have one all the time. You just some you got that's content marketing. You got to put stuff out. You have to be an expert. You have to you have to do stuff. Not everything is even right now. This is not a sale. I just want to talk about crowdfunding. Just talk about it. Let's you know be a, be an expert in your space. So if you're in the feet and the shoe business, be an expert in it. Talk about it. Talk about the world. So, so what happens? You know, money comes in. You know, a couple of weeks after the campaign ends, what starts the process of you guys getting the shoes into people's hands? Uh, or feet, I should say, maybe. Get them on people's oh, feet. Yeah, very good, go. very good. <laughs> okay, okay, so there's um, the shoemaking business is not everybody understands the shoemaking business. Well, there's cobblers, uh, right? You just go, they're in trees, they live in trees, right? With the yeah, something like just, that. Something, something like that. Like that? Okay. Yeah, something like that. Okay, maybe I don't um, know then. <laughs> okay, so um, everybody, everybody would like to design a shoe. Mm -hmm. The designing bit is easy. Um, People would like to go and produce a shoe and then they absolutely poop themselves because they go, you need to spend that much yeah. to build a shoe. Yep. Uh, yes, you do. There's molds. There's uh, now we're, we're, we're fortunate. We're using molds that we've already paid for. Right. So cool. we've, uh, so bringing the product to market, we have our factories that we've been working with for the past six years. We've we've been transparent with the factory. We've we've even done a, a mini production run uh, of two hundred pieces, mm. so that the factory understands different sizes, etc., cetera, right. etc. Cetera. Because one of the things we're planning to do is we're planning to upset the apple cart um, because we don't believe in imperial and European sizing. Mm. Because oh, you. Well, again, if I was to wear a, a, a Nike shoe, I'm a size 12. Right. Adidas, Adidas, I'm a size 13. Right. New Balance, I'm an 11 and a half. That's great, and, yeah. And it, the, the whole Imperial and the European system makes absolutely no sense whatsoever. If you look at it, you go, I don't know. And I ask people, what's your shoe size? And they go, I, well, it's about a six or a seven. So which one is it? One of them. I just got to try it out and figure it out. Exactly. But you can't try it out anymore. Right. Yep. You can't go into the store and try it out. Right. So from a, from a logistical point of view, what we're doing is we're moving to the metric system. Hmm. Um, because you can't really lie about the metric system. It is what it is. Right. If your foot is 24.5 centimeters long, it's 24.5 centimeters long. <laughs> right, right, right. You know, it's not a size nine, maybe 10, maybe 11. Right, right. It's a 245 centimeters long and it's yeah. 110 millimeters wide. Right. That's it. So that's the way, that's, uh, that's one of the things that we had to think about in terms of the logistics, but also during the production. Yeah. Because what we're doing is we're actually measuring the inside of the shoe. Hmm. That's what we're doing. Right, right, right. We, we don't care about the outside measurements because mm. you don't wear it on the outside. You wear Brand it on the outside. Yeah. So we're, we're going to be slightly different to the rest of, and hopefully doing it that way will reduce the number of people choosing the wrong size. Yeah, so that was going to be my next question because I've actually worked on a three or four shoe campaigns and the sizing was or and the return process of sizing right like i you know just but what we're talking about i'm an 11 and a half i ordered you know, 11 and a half and it's not 11 and a half or whatever you know um or you know really i'm a 12 how do you guys sort of see yourself navigating that portion of this process well we're, we're just we're basically we're forcing it we're forcing the issue yeah um to the point where we're, we're not going to call um we're not going to even call it a, a U6 or a U7. Right there. Right. We're, we're going to call it, we're going to call it letter A. <laughs> letter A is, is 21.5 centimeters on the inside. So if you are 21.56, we suggest you go to the next size up. Right, right. Got or you. else you're going to have a very snug fit. Now, yeah. some people will want a snug fit, 
but if you go over the over the over the the centimeter, then you move to the next size. Right, right. And the the reality is, measuring your feet is very easy. Yeah, it's it, it, it's one of the easiest <laughs> things to do. You put your foot on the floor, you draw a line where your toe is, a line where your heel is. You draw a line on either side of your your, your foot, and you measure. And you measure it. Right. That's it. And yep. look at the graph and go. I'm 24 and a half. I'm 24 and a half. Brilliant. Yeah. That's the one I want. That's the one I want. I'm 24.3. Nearest one is 24 and a half. Right. That's the one I want. That's the one. That makes sense. Totally makes sense. So, well, let's, let's flip over. Let's, um, let's flip over to a, sort of a quick lightning round question, and then I'll let you get on your day because you've probably got emails and messages to respond to. <laughs> um, it's, uh, so, it's, all, it's all meetings this afternoon, Jeff. All meetings. All, nothing but Friday meetings. I do a lot of Friday meetings, too. I, I like my podcast all on Fridays because it's a little Good bit lighter you. day, you know? Um, so what have you been watching uh, in the Netflix or Hulu or streaming world? Is there Have you watched anything recently that you've uh, enjoyed? Um. No, no, um, nothing. I, I've got to be honest. I have not watched Netflix or anything else for the past uh, since fifteenth of December. Wow, Just all head down. You're in it. It's a head. It's head down. It's uh, um. You, it, it literally is. It's it's a funnel. Yeah. Keep okay. it focused. Keep it okay. focused. I can tell you, I watched a film over Christmas that I was so disappointed. What I watched the, the Wonder Woman film. I heard that's what everybody, nobody's into that. Oh, one right now. that was a, that was yeah. a pony. That was a pony. Yeah. Oh no. Never mind. Okay. All right. Well, I mean, at least that was going to be my next question. Is there a movie, but probably not, but are you reading anything right now? Is there a, a books at all you're reading? Um, how to enjoy rejection. Oh, that's, that's, a, a, that's probably a good one for, uh, for this. Good yeah yeah because that's like literally 90 percent of the job is uh being rejected <laughs> you know it is, the other it is. yeah that's cool uh and how about like um i mean outside of i know listening to this podcast uh is there any other podcast you listen to are you a podcast listener at all i'm not a podcast listener yeah but, okay uh, okay no. i have again it's time. it's really it's focus focus time 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 yeah now we've got a, we've got another project uh going on at the moment jeff um it's it's for the are you familiar with the neoprene sleeves for your beard mm -hmm. yeah yeah yeah. yep um yep. we've we've patented a a competitor to that oh nice so we're just we're building that that particular company up um that's called drink cup okay. um so that a lot of my time is split between Sokwa and yeah. drink cup um so not that much time left after that that's cool how about, how about like resources that you're using if, if you are like, you know, just staying up on this stuff and, and is there, you know, medium blogs you go to or, you know, where do you kind of go to get research and stuff uh, uh, for like marketing and stuff? Uh, for marketing, it, it, but there's, there's a lot of good things out there for, for crowdfunding um, generally. Mm -hmm. um, there's masses of stuff for marketing, but specifically crowdfunding. Um, I'm not going to blow your horn, but you're, you're a good source. Oh, yeah, we, we, we put um, sorry, I'll, I'll blow your horn. You're a good <laughs> source. You. Yeah, yeah. Um, um, I, I, I like I, I like the way you deliver information because it's very transparent. Yeah. It's it's not you know this is my information. Yeah. You, you're actually trying to go a little bit out of your way yep. to you know find a solution for people. Yeah. Like I've, I've got what I've got one at the moment is we're looking at uh, we've been approached. Oh, maybe this is a good um, secretary in the, in, the, in the conversation. Um, one of the things we didn't know about when we started the campaign was the number of Japanese crowdfunding agencies that we would be contacted by. Yep. Um, I'm absolutely amazed. Yeah. And But nobody can tell me who the best one is. Right. So it's a kind of a free-for-all. Yeah. Yeah. So, and I'm, and I'm speaking to one person. He says, "Oh, you don't want to do that." And, and how are you going to get your money? And I'm thinking, well, they're paying wholesale, right? Um, and then you've got the others that just want to act as your agency. Mm -hmm. what, what's What's your opinion on the Japanese? Uh, the best way to approach the Japanese crowdfunding platforms. 
You didn't realize you were being interviewed as well. Yeah. You know, we've shied away from it. We have found that it can potentially be more headache um, unless you really think your product's going to take off there. Um, Yeah. We have focused, we've just so much shied away from it flat out. Um, We've just had more headaches than positivity. So maybe it just hasn't grown up. We've had a couple campaigns that started there and then came to us. And again, they did such small numbers that it just, again, felt like just a lot of waste of time. Um, so that's, that's kind of, that, that's where we are right now um, mm-hmm. in, in the process. And, you know, but again, maybe it is the right fit or, or a good next step or something, but I don't know. Well, again, this, this is a, a little bit, you asked me a question earlier about you know the, the kind of the long term. So the way that we've looked at this entire crowdfunding campaign is is it is a it's a six month campaign. Right. Yep. From oh, actually it's a six and a half month campaign mm-hmm. from the moment you launch the campaign. Yep. I'm not talking about the period before that. So what what we've done is we've we're using the the campaign to actually solicit distributors and wholesalers in other countries right and we've uh, literally uh, and this is a beautiful byproduct of of the campaign we're telling people that uh, we're telling these distributors and wholesalers that they can't have the product until july 2021 yep and that if they want the product and they want you know the quantities then they need to place their their orders right and and their deposits now Yep. What you're describing is how we set up comp- when, because we're always thinking about a really like an 18 month cycle for a lot of our clients, right? We're thinking about mm-hmm. the, obviously the crowdfunding campaign, then the post campaign pre-funding, but in that portion of it, I'm, we are looking for wholesale distributors. We're, we're working those angles so that when we go to make that first order, you know, we want to order as many as possible. Right? Like, <laughs> you know, I don't want to just order a thousand units. I want to order 20,000 units if possible. Mm-hmm. you know because you know we've we yeah, it's cheaper right typically it's gonna be cheaper and we're right. all the logistics yeah. and all this stuff starting to happen yeah. you know yeah. um and then we're usually after that you know helping them launch the e-commerce right so just going right into shopify or amazon or wherever you're going next um you know you're, you're hopefully you're moving that energy you know right that, into that's the next that's day. exactly how we've looked at it jeff we've uh, we've basically we started, we, we started obviously with the crowdfunding campaign and there's the post campaign. Then potentially we'll move to Japan afterwards because we, we're going to test Japan. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. We, we already sell to Japan. See, that now that's different. My clients so, have no relationship. So it's like, it's been, you know, everything has been that, right? If you have relationships, then I think it's going to be a much better. Yeah, yeah. It's, better so, thing, you know? and then, and then you, that takes you up to the month six of the year. Then you are then, as you say, you're going into the e-commerce and distribution and wholesale. Yep. So, you know, I think you're bang on. I think we look at this launch. Yes, it's 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 one product, two colors. Yep. We, we chose not to offer different colors. Yeah. Keep yeah, it simple. I, keep it simple. You know, I know. Yeah, more it's colors simple. make it way more challenging in these campaigns. And it's because the platform doesn't really support it. The platform doesn't really make it easy to switch colors and you know, you just it, Kickstarter, it's a one it's a one trick pony at the end of the day. It really truly is. It really know? is. Yeah, it gets way challenging when you have all kinds of different rewards and there's all and people are like, "What what am I buying now?" and you can't change the reward, you know, you're like, "Uh <laughs> Yeah, I know, I know. But yeah. again, there's some logic in it. So, yep, 100. Um, yeah, you know, we're from, we're from the shoe business, so we actually know what colors actually work. Right, right. And yep. as much as you like to have lime red and yellow, mm-hmm. yeah, no, no, no. they nobody buys them. Yeah, right. right. Three people yeah. buy them. Yeah, and I mean, then you say, but you ask for yellow, but it's not the right yellow. Right. Yep. I know. So okay, I know. you know what. Keep it simple. Yep. If we do special drops in the in the future, which we will do, yeah, then we'll do special drops in the future. Yep. And but, that's but a lot of times those aren't crowdfunding campaigns. Those are little one-offs, little one-offs. Deals. Absolutely, they're not yeah. what you're. 
you're not working an entire year on it, you know? No, uh, no, no. Yeah. I, if, if, again, Jeff, if I, had, if I had it again, I probably wouldn't even put the white in there. I, yeah, I, I know. Uh, yeah. I can see that would be why there's a ton of logic into having the one color, you know, and the only, only times that we would add it is if we really had a unique stretch goal strategy or add on goal strategy. But even at that point, it just gets more and more, you start murkying the narrative, you know, it's just, I I don't, I don't don't know what your, uh, what your philosophy is about stretch goals and, and all the rest of the stuff. I think that's, I think you have to respect the buyer. If you, yeah. if you, again, they're, they're, they're coming in, they're looking at options, too many options, you, you're going to kill yourself. Yep. Yeah. We stretch goals for us. We've done a lot in like fitness categories where there was just, there was actual upgrades that could happen. Right. But they were small upgrades that you wouldn't crowdfund, you know, a bar on top of the thing. You know, so you're just like, all right, well, listen, if you want to buy the bar, that's fine. We still start with that minimum viable product of like, you're, this is our bare minimum. This is what you're getting. Yeah. And then if, again, when you look at the strategy and you say, all right, we're going to roll this out week two, week three, we might roll out this, but even that we're starting to lose that more and more and just go right into like, this is the thing you're buying this widget. That's it. It's, just, it's, yeah. You want that or not? Yes or no? Move on. It, it does what it no. does, and that's yeah. what it does. That's it. That's it. No more than that, you know. And just let it be that. And then, you know, that's where we go back to clients, and we're always talking about like, just know, you know, you're going to have this audience. So, you know, you might if you got you got you have 2,200 buyers on Kickstarter, right? Sell to them later. <laughs> the <laughs> the newest thing, right? Just send an email and say, Hey, we put this up on our Shopify store. If you guys want it, you know, yep. doesn't mean you need to murky it up in the Kickstarter campaign. So exactly. Exactly. But yeah. But this is an awesome, awesome conversation. So where can people dive into your world? Yeah. Uh, where, where, you know, if you want to, you know, obviously we'll send people to the Kickstarter page, but how can they kind of just get in your world and just see what you guys are working on? Um, where should uh, they go? go, go to, go to our Facebook page, um, Sokwa X 10. Cool. Um, that's really, you know, if anybody wants to, um, direct message me or whatever you, you can do that through there um, go and have a look at the campaign go and have a look at how we we answer questions or and I'm, I'm not saying we do it perfectly but we do, I think we do it okay yeah um, um, yeah that's that's pretty much what we have if you want to look at what uh, what we our other models our other models you can see at sokwa.com um, as you see very imaginative sokwa x10 dot com and sokwa.com um and uh, if you want to look at other products that we do um then you'd have to go to genecos.com g-e-n-e-c-o-s.com very cool well patrick i appreciate you t- taking time out of your day this is an amazing oh, thank conversation thank you jeff thank you so great so great to i love talking to people who were, were in it um and I, I hope our listeners really enjoy this conversation because this is what it's like to run a campaign absolutely <laughs> this is what it is so all right patrick i appreciate it thanks so much for your time and uh good luck on the rest of the campaign you got a lot of time left so uh keep kicking butt man thank you jeff have all a right, great afternoon up. thanks all right everybody how about that uh conversation there yeah, it was a good one. Oh man, I got stuff cranking out here. Yeah, it was awesome, man. Patrick, again, thank you so much for taking time out of your day to uh, to chat about your crowdfunding campaign. Super, super, super great. And I hope you guys enjoyed it too, man. There is a lot to unpack in there. Um, just kind of reviewing it, even myself here, sitting here listening to it, man. We we really got into a lot of topics. So again, make sure if you're thinking about running a crowdfunding campaign, go to woodshed.agency right now. Pick a, a, a time to talk. Go to my consultation button. Go to the blog if you want to read there. Subscribe to the podcast. Remember, sub- smash that, right? All right, guys. Uh, let's, look, let's, let's have our musical guest on, man. Uh, we got Sam Lawton um, from uh, – yeah, it's just Sam Lawton. He's not even from a band. And uh, he came to Groovebox Studios um, roughly about six years ago or so and uh, did a seven-song um, set for us. And this is – I thought the song was just amazing. So why don't we go ahead and check that out? And I'll talk to you all on Thursday with another episode. So till then, stay cool. And uh, I'll talk to you all later. Bye now.
alone with time.